بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ایز وی ہیو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا آتھر آف سائلس مینر جارج ایلیٹ اینڈ ٹو ڈے وی وڈ ڈسکس اباؤٹ دا اسٹوری آف سائلس مینر آئی وڈ ریڈ دا اسٹوری آف سائلس مینر اینڈ یو ہیو ٹو لسن ویری کیئرفلی اینڈ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ the whole story first of all i would like to tell you about the overview of silas mandler it was published 1861 and as you know the author name is george eliot the language which was used in this novel it was english the main characters were nancy lamiter Dunstan Kes, Godfrey Kes, Molly, Molly Farron, Silas Mandler. And the adaptations, Black Snake Mourn, 2006. Generous fiction, novel, children's literature, speculative fiction. Now we go through the characters Silas Manner the main character of the novel you can say that the protagonist of the novel the protagonist who is the main character of the novel whose name is Silas Manner Silas Manner a weaver and wiser who is cast out of Lantern yard by his treacherous friend William Dan and accumulates a small fortune only to have it is stolen by Dunstan Case despite these misfortunes he finds his faith by his faith and virtue by the arrival of young Appy daughter of Godfrey Case Godfrey eldest son of the local esquire who is being constantly blackmailed by his dissolute brother dissolute brother Dustin over his secret marriage to Molly when Molly dies he feels relief but in time realizes he must account for his deceit to those he was wronged Dunstan case second eldest son of the local esquire He constantly blackmails his older brother. He has a rotten heart and steals Silas gold after killing his old brother, older brother's horse accidentally. Aaron Winthrop, son of Dolly, who marries Appy at the end of the novel. William Dan William Dale is Silas former best friend who looked after and respected Silas in Lantern Yard. William ultimately betrays Silas by framing him for theft and marrying Silas' fiancée Sarah after Sarah is exiled from Lantern Yard. After Sarah uh, after uh, after Silas is exiled from Lantern, Lantern Yard. Sara Silas finds a fiance in Lantern Yard who subsequently marries his treacherous friend William Dan Molly Farren Molly Farren Godfrey's first and secret wife who has who has a child by him she dies in the attempt to reveal their relationship and Ryan Godfrey leaving the child child epi to wander into silas life epi daughter of molly and godfrey who is cared for by silas after the death of her mother Mis- mischievous in her early years she grows into a radiant young girl devoted to her adopted father Nancy Cass Godfrey Cass second wife a 
a morally and socially respectable young woman. My dear students, you would understand all these uh, characters after understanding this story. Now, uh, I read out the story, a cloth weaver. You know who was the cloth weaver? Who is the cloth weaver? The Silas Manner basically is a cloth weaver. His profession is cloth weaver. A cloth weaver falsely accused of theft. It is the subheading of this story. We would come, uh, we would come to know that how he was blamed by his close friend, William. This is the story of a cloth weaver by the name of Silas Manner. He lived in a locality called Lantern Yard in big industrial town and earned his living by weaving yarn. He belonged to the Methodist sect of Christianity and was a deeply religious man. Basically, Silas Manner is a religious man. In course of time, he developed an intimacy with a servant girl by the name of Sarah and made up his mind to marry her. Actually, he was involved with Sarah. And this thing, his friend William did not like it because William wants to get married with Sarah. However, his desire to marry that girl was thwarted by his own intimate friend William Dan, who alleged that the theft as a result of which the clergyman of their church and lost his money had been committed by Marner. You see how he was blamed by how he was blamed by his own friend just because of that girl. The allegation made by William Dan was confirmed when a when according to custom, lots were drawn and when through this procedure, Marner was found to be culprit. Marner's accumulation of guineas and his obsession with money. Actually, Marner had not committed any theft. Yes, of course, he did not commit any theft. He was an honest guy. He was honest man and he was religious too. He was an innocent victim of the manipulations of the other men. But, but not knowing the real facts and in view of the disgrace, Sarah forsook Marner and married William Dan. It was great tragedy uh, he suffered from, Mar uh, from Sarah and William. Because Sarah uh, has left him forever and she got married with William. Bitterly feeling both the disgrace and the loss of the girl whom he had wanted to marry, Marner left his native place and traveled to, to a far off village called Ravalu, where he settled down in a cottage. Situated close to the stone pits at a short distance from the village. There, he resumed his occup occupation as handloom weaver. Marner's occupation flourished and began to make much more money than he used to make from his occupation in Lantern Yard. In course of time, he was able to hoard quite a large amount of guineas which used to count every night because the sight of guineas glittering in the light of his fireplace used to gladden his heart. He had now become a miser with money as his obsession. Marner's hoard of guineas stolen from his Cottage. It is, my dear students, an other tragedy for Miser, for uh, Silas Manner. 
whatever he has collected whatever he has the money and guineas it these all things were stolen it so happened that a needy young man of a rich family of the village passing marner's cottage one dark night passed and decided to ask marner for a loan he entered the cottage as door was already open marner himself was nowhere to be seen and this young man whose name was dunston cass stole marner's hoard which he was able to trace to large hole in the floor covered with bricks and sand dunston walk out of the cottage with the two leather bags in his hands feeling happy about the money he had been able to acquire dunston was very happy to get these old guineas these old things but see what was happened with him however after having walked a little distance he fell into one of the pits which were full of water and got drowned the accident of his drowning remained unknown for 16 years and came to light only after the pits were drained of the water which always had filled them manners grief over his loss manners manner was very upset he was very disappointed yeah he must be Marner felt deeply grieved by the disappearance of his money when returned to his cottage from the village where he had gone on a small errand to save himself the the trouble of doing it early next morning he now went back to the village and reported the matter to the villagers and at their advice to constable investigation were duly carried out but no trace of the money was found and thief could not be identified though a certain peddler who occasionally used to visit the village to sell his wares was thought to be responsible for the theft marner's disappointment was intense and his life now became miserable though he resumed his weaving the appearance of a little girl at marner's cottage it was an other uh, surprise or a, it was another thing came in marner's life days passed a new year's eve when it was snowing though mildly a little two year old girl strayed into marner's cottage the door of which stood open and laid down before the fireplace falling asleep in a few minutes on the on this occasion marner was present in in his cottage but having falling into an apple uh, apple epileptic fit he stood motionless and still in the doorway unaware of the girl's entry on regaining consciousness marner saw the golden hair of the girl without seeing her figure on the floor he thought that his gold had been restored to him you know in his mind just uh, it was about his uh, gold he was just thinking about the gold that he was thinking that god help him help him out and he has written all the things again but it was another story it was the it was uh, the hair of the girl it was not the gold he thought that his gold had been restored to him but when he touched what he thought to be a heap of gold he found that it was the golden hair of little girl 
he had feeling that nature had sent him a golden haired little girl as a substitute for his gold guineas you know i have already told about him about marner that he was very religious man and he believes in god in everything he was thinking about that it is from his god he then immediately set out of the cottage and following that footprints which the girl had left on the snow covered ground trace the girl's mother who lay as if in a swoon on the snow marner informed the people at the red house about the about the body of woman lying behind a bush and the woman who was found to be dead first removed to marner's cottage and subsequently buried by villagers as that of an unknown pauper the identity of that woman you know who was that woman molly as we have uh, discussed about in characters so we have talked about this character also molly now we will come to know that who was she actually the dead woman was the wife of godfrey kes the eldest son of the leading family in the village of ravlo godfrey had foolishly and thoughtlessly married the woman you know who was godfrey the godfrey was very gentleman he belongs to a noble family and he was the eldest son of a squire whose name was molly and the uh, and the woman whose name was molly though he had been wanting to marry a highly respectable and very beautiful girl by the name of nancy who was the daughter of a well to do farm owner mr lemet the woman who was molly had proved to be drug addict and it was because of the effect of that drug that she while walking over the snow with a little two year old daughter in her arms had fallen down and died molly had been walked towards the red house in order to confront her husband and expose him to his father the old squire case who she knew would become prayers and take suitable action against him you know her intention was not good molly's intentions was were not good she was going to disclose her marriage to his father to his father who was the name who was squire who was very noble man because he he did, he did not want that his son get marry to a very uh, dirty woman to a very just just like this this dead woman who is who is using drugs and such kind of things well it was not happen in other words molly intention was blackmail her husband but having taken a dose of opium in the course of her journey on food had collapsed on the snow covered ground godfrey cast relief and his marriage to nancy as we have already discussed that godfrey wants to uh, get marry with nancy and she was uh, to get rid of uh, of uh, molly uh, he does not like her so he was very happy when he he can he comes to know that now molly is no more so he was very happy on seeing marner with a little girl in his arms at the entrance to the main hall of red house godfrey immediately recognized his daughter soon afterwards godfrey on visiting marner's cottage recognized the dead woman as his own wife molly godfrey felt inwardly very happy that molly no longer stood in the way of his marriage with nancy and that his daughter was safe with marner who had decided to keep the girl with him and bring her up as his own child 
not long afterwards godfrey got married to nancy 16 years later nancy a child lays wife to godfrey as uh, godfrey did not accept his own daughter and he has handed over to the silas manner but alas it was the you can say that it was very bad situation it was uh, from the god that uh, godfrey has no child now he did not have any child because he uh, nancy present herself as a childless wife so 16 years passed unfortunately nancy did not produce any child and godfrey began to feel miserable without a child in his house you know children are very necessary for to keep uh, to running the old thing the old squire had long been dead and most of the property including the red house of his father had come into the possession of godfrey as the eldest son nancy had proved to be a devoted wife though she realized that she had proved to be a cause of acute disappointment and distress to godfrey by having failed to produce a child though it was not the fault of nancy she was faultless in this matter because it is all from the god godfrey had proved to be a most loyal and loving husband to nancy even though she had failed to give him a child the discovery of dunstan's dead body as a skeleton now the time has come when the discovery has come of dunstan dead body just in the form of the skeleton dunstan dead body now reduced to a skeleton was now discovered lying at the bottom of a pit when the pit was drained of the water the entire hoard of guineas which had been stolen from marner's cottage was found lying intact close to the skeleton the hoard was duly restored to marner but the discovery that the theft had been committed by the younger brother of godfrey brought much disgrace to the cass family you know who was dunstan the dunstan was younger brother of godfrey but unfortunately he was not a good boy at the at the juncture godfrey decided to reveal to his wife nancy the secret of his wife of his first marriage the death of his first wife 16 years back and the six and the uh, existence of his daughter who had been given the name of appy and who had been brought up by the silas manner now after 16 years godfrey has decided to disclose his secret to the to his wife nancy and he was definitely he was confused that how he should disclose but he has to godfrey was now very keen to claim the 18 year old girl and to bring her into his house because he he was her real father and because he had no other child accordingly godfrey told nancy everything about his first marriage and about the girl who was born of that marriage and he did so in evening the very day on which the skeleton of his brother and and the hoard of guineas had been found at the bottom of one of the pits he had returned home 
in a state of shock after the discovery of the skeleton which had been recognized because close to it lay also gold phrase gold phrase rising with with his name inscribed on its handle in golden letters godfrey thought that that this was the right time for him to disclose to nancy the secret which he had kept so long from her about his marriage and about his daughter epi now we see the reaction of the nancy that after disclosing his husband first marriage and his husband's uh, daughter so how what how is the reaction of her of nancy nancy uh, nancy's reaction to godfrey disclosure however when godfrey did come out with the facts nancy seemed quite unmoved and merely said that if he had revealed this secret to her 16 years back they could have done their duty towards epi and she was right about this thing godfrey was amazed by nancy's favorable reaction to his disclosure he was amazed he was very happy to see the reaction of the nancy and although i think that uh, he could not understand the nature of nancy after a long period evidently he had not rightly understood understood his wife's generous nature during the 16 years that he had lived with her godfrey replied that if had told her the secret at the very outset 16 years ago she might she might not have married with him because you know uh, my dear students godfrey has also some fears he he had also fears about the marriage that if i if i told her very before so she might she could not get, uh, marry with him but nancy said that she was not sure whether she would have rejected his proposal of marriage but she was sure that she would not have married anybody else tears were now flowing from nancy's eyes she was in a grief she added that she added that a greater wrong had been done to epi godfrey said that they could now go to marner's house and claim the girl and that he would not mind the whole coming to know that epi was his daughter and that he had brought her into his house in that capacity the claim of godfrey to epi rejected by epi as well as by marner when the godfrey and nancy went to marner's cottage and revealed to and reveal the truth to marner he bitterly asked godfrey why godfrey had not claimed the girl 16 years ago when he had gone to red house with the child in his arms in order to get a doctor to attend to woman who lay unconscious behind a bush on a snow covered ground godfrey replied that he had certainly committed a blunder and had done a wrong of which however he was now repenting merit said that sorry marner said that by this time he himself had begun to love the girl as his own daughter and that it would be most painful to him to part with her after a good deal of discussion marner left the decision of epi herself and epi said that she could not accept her real father's offer 
to take her to his house because she could not leave the man who had brought her up for so many years and she gave an other reason also for not accepting her real father's offer she said that she was going to marry a village boy by name of aron who belonged to the class of working people and you know people you know my dear uh, students why uh, godfrey belonged to upper class society so it was very difficult to accept the working class people for them thus godfrey and nancy had to return to red house feeling disappointed happy's marriage with aron in due in due course happy got married to aron and at happy's suggestion it was arranged that instead of marriage couple going away to stay separately from silas manner they joined silas manner in his cottage so that the old man might not feel lonely and so that happy could look after his needs how happy was very kind you see she is very kind and very generous in her nature godfrey indirectly did a lot for happy on this occasion providing her with a garden for which she had expressed a strong desire and arranging a wedding rest for the village folk without letting them know that he done so because happy was his daughter and so god phrase and so god phrase secret remained secret from the village folk so this was the story of silas manner i hope you like it